Hey you guys, so welcome to Armenia and this is going to be a review on Yerevan and for those of you guys who don't know how it works first part is the gay travel information I have the second part is general travel information like things I liked and didn't like and the third part is if I have any kind of stories to tell and I do have a third part in this video. It's actually kind of just a rant. <laughs> it's not a separate story. It kind of relates to something I'm going to tell you guys in the first part about gay travel. So it kind of connects, but it's actually more of a rant. So only stick around for that if you're interested. All right, going to the first part. All right, part one, Gay Yerevan. So is it a gay travel destination? I'm going to say... A little bit. So, of the three countries that I personally count as like the Caucasus area countries, by which I mean Georgia, Armenia, and Azerbaijan, I think it is the most liberal. Uh, I definitely feel I saw a lot of gay men here who seemed very, I don't want to say they were openly gay, because I don't think there's any, probably any openly gay people here, but they were very obviously gay, it didn't seem very bothered by being obviously gay, and it didn't seem like other people were giving them grief or whatever. Um, and overall, the gay people I met since I've been here, I feel like they're the least paranoid of all the gay people I've met in the countries. The Georgians were completely paranoid. Um, the people in Azerbaijan were, are less paranoid as well. Yeah, but more paranoid so than here. This is just my personal feeling. Like the people in Georgia were really paranoid. Like you would think they're living back in like the middle ages or something. They were super worried and freaked out and like stuff like that. Um, by the way, yes, I'm sorry, I have a sunburn. I was walking all day. So, overall, this part of the world I don't think is a very gay travel destination place to go to, to begin with. Um, so I would not come to any of those countries with the mentality of like, oh, I'm, yeah, I'm like going to Spain and there's going to be all these clubs, and there's going to be all these events. Like, this is not the part of the world to go to if that's what you're looking for. Um, this is the part of the world where people are... are relatively religious and uh, so and we know that being gay under any religion is always kind of a no or a taboo and then on top of that you know they were under communist rule for a very long time and under communism gays being is like a very big taboo so you kind of have like all these forces kind of saying that gay is wrong and it's taboo and such um, the reason I would think this place is maybe more liberal is I definitely think it seems to get a lot more tourists than Georgia or Azerbaijan gets. I would say of these three countries, Azerbaijan gets the least amount of tourists. Um, I would probably say Armenia gets the most, then Georgia, and then Azerbaijan. So maybe just being more exposed to tourism is part of the reason. Maybe they're a little bit more open-minded. And probably also because this, these are our people, the Armenian people, these are people that have, through the centuries, gone through a lot of crap uh, that has been very detrimental and difficult, and I think kind of puts a lot of things into perspective. I just think a lot of people here can't be bothered as much as in some of the other countries. And when I'm saying that they're more liberal, I also mean, definitely you can tell, like, in Azerbaijan, where I live, it's a, Azerbaijan is predominantly Muslim, and then kind of like, there's the, that's basically kind of where the split is, Georgia and Armenia are Christian, and there's definitely just, overall, there's, they're just much more liberal in the way they dress and everything like that. I see a lot of men wearing tank tops and shorts, and women are also wearing, like, you really don't see that in Azerbaijan yet, and it's still... It's a secular Muslim country, but at the same time, it's still a little bit like a 
men don't wear shorts and women don't really wear very revealing clothing. So in that sense, they're also a lot more liberal here. Yeah, so definitely I got, there's a lot of cruising going on in the city. It's very cruisy. I think, I feel like the area around Republic Square is very cruisy. Um, if you look online, they're going to tell you that the area around the Opera Building is cruisy. I did not get that sense at all when I was there. Um, and the other place that's supposedly very cruisy is the Children's Park, which is not what the locals call it. I think it's called like Om Agai or something like that in Armenian. Again, that place did seem a little bit cruisy, but I was there during the daytime, and so I don't know if it gets even more intensely cruisy in the evening. Um, in terms of gay bars, gay clubs, no, they don't have that, at least not official places. I mean, there's places that are like gay friendly, supposedly on the internet, but I don't know how updated that is. I think that's something, when it comes to countries like this, where there's no actively open gay area or gay clubs, I generally would just recommend that you go online right before your trip and see and maybe even talk to local people on like one of the apps and go like what is currently happening because what happens in a lot of these kind of countries is that there is maybe official gay nights or something or even if they're not official there's nights where there's like gay things going on but it's all kept a little bit underground so I feel like if I tell you guys now what the current places are Within six months, that might change. You know, those clubs are going to close down, and then a new one's going to open, and all kinds of stuff. So that's that to me makes more sense if you just talk to like somebody who's local, and go like, where is it currently happening, and they can probably keep you up to date on that. Um, having said that, I forgot to mention this. I also met some people here who are really trying to push for more acceptance um, of gay people here. They're definitely kind of working towards establishing a community here and. Um, trying to work towards getting rights and trying to work towards getting more people to live an open lifestyle because that's a big aspect of it, which is something I, I completely have not heard of at all in Georgia or in Azerbaijan. So things are changing here in like the right direction. They're not there yet. Like they're definitely not there yet all the way. But like I said, if you really are like, I really want to go to this part of the world, this is probably the place where I would say you're going to have the most liberal and accepting experience uh, yeah um so yeah there's no like there's no saunas there's no gay clubs there's no none official just you know try to check online and then of course which is what is usually what i tell you guys in these videos is you use the apps i mean almost i think almost all gay men in this day and age have moved away from Cruising and like it just doesn't make sense anymore these days like there was a time when cruising was an essential because you didn't really have any other way of doing it But nowadays I think cruising is becoming less and less frequent. I'm not saying it doesn't exist But it's becoming less frequent because everybody just does everything online so Definitely you can check like the online apps and stuff Yeah, ah, okay, and this is the thing that's gonna tie into the third part of the video um, this is my one little inside. This might be an insider tip or not. I definitely think currently a gay restaurant, or at least a gay friendly restaurant, is called. Um, wait, let me make sure I say the name right. Um, Dolmama. 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 Dolmana. Dolmana. Um, still saying them. I was there today, and this is what, like I went there not not because I saw this on the internet that it might be a place or anything. Like I literally just went there because I wanted to eat. When I go travel, I always want to eat local food because I figure like where better to eat local food than in the country that you're going to, or Armenian food than if you're in Armenia. So I went in there, and right when I got in there already, there was two gay couples like. There was one over here, one over here. Then I came in. I'm a gay man. And then when, after I ordered my food, another gay set of gay guys came in who I don't think were a couple that seemed, felt had more of a first date vibe kind of thing. So I just feel like it's a little bit random to be in a restaurant where literally all the customers were gay men. 
if it doesn't mean anything. And of course the waiter was gay. <laughs> um, so I don't know if that's really a thing or not. I don't know, but it just seems a little bit, yeah, it seems a little too, to just not be anything. Like I just can't imagine that all these gay men would just happen to be there if it's just coincidence. It seems like it was too many of us. So that's my one little insider tip for you guys. Uh, also, a oh, little insider tip. This is not a gay... Ah, I'll put that in part two. So that's all I got for you guys in terms of gay travel. And if you're interested, stick around for part two, which is going to start now. Hey, part two. What do I think is worth seeing? What do I think is not worth seeing? So before I start this part, I should tell you guys that this part of the world is not easy to travel in because a lot of the countries here do not get along with their neighboring countries and so there's a lot of issues with like if you get a visa from this country then you can't visit this country or you know no direct there's a lot of weird things like with um like azerbaijan where i was where i was a teacher um and not armenia our neighboring countries but you can't I mean, like, Baku to Yerevan would have probably been like an hour and a half flight, if that much. But there is no flights, there's no train connections, there's no buses because the border is completely closed. They're, they're officially in peace talks, but also at the same time they're still at war, even though they're not fighting at this time. So there's all these issues with like visas here and how to get places. And it's, it's not just this part, but also like in all of the... Kazakhstan and Uzbekistan like all these places are really difficult to get visas and how to get there and it's just a big headache so before you come to this part of the world you definitely have to do your homework because if you say yeah you do want to see Azerbaijan or you do want to see some of the neighboring countries you definitely need to make sure you exactly plan it out where to go first because if you go to Armenia first you're definitely not going to go to Azerbaijan uh, it might I don't, I don't want to say this, you can look this up online, but I could imagine it's also going to cause troubles with going to Turkey, because, I, because Armenia and Turkey also have a very bad relationship. Maybe even Iran, I don't know. It just, just keep that in mind before you travel here. Um, all right, so I'm going to start with the good, because in my past travel videos, the people are always like, all you're talking about is the things you don't like, man, you're so negative. So now I always make a point out of saying I'm going to talk about the good and then I'm going to talk about the bad. So if anybody starts complaining that I don't say any good things, I can be like, nah. Alright, so here are the things that I think in the Yerevan area, I've only, I'm only within the Yerevan area, I do city reviews, I don't talk about countries, the countries are huge, I don't have time, money, or energy to travel a whole country to give you guys a whole overview of a whole country, I do city reviews. And in the city of Yerevan, these are the things in the order that I like them that I would say are worth seeing, okay? Number one, hands down, and I'm totally going to butcher this name, is the Svartnots Temple, which uh, used to be a cathedral. And I want to say it was destroyed... I was just there yesterday, and I, I know I read the thing. I want to say it was destroyed when during the Ottoman Empire beginning. So maybe like the 1300s, 1400s is when it was destroyed, and then it was kind of forgotten. And then it was re and then they found it again in the beginning of the 20th century, and they never rebuilt it. They just left it as ruins. And I don't, I don't know, like I, I'm really into like really dilapidated and you know, ruins, like in architecture in general, I find something very romantic about seeing like old buildings and they're already kind of falling apart and deteriorating and there's moss growing on them. I don't know, I find something very romantic about that. So those ruins to me were beautiful. It was definitely hands down, like everything else on the list I like, but this is like here and everything else on the list already starts like here. Like this is, that's number one thing that I saw where I was like, wow, this is really cool and amazing. And it took a million selfies, yeah. And the second thing is the Cascades, which is nice. 
Um, I think there's a lot of really interesting art in that area. The Cascades themselves, probably you go there, take a picture. And, but if you go inside, there's some really interesting art in the inside that I thought was pretty cool. And there's a lot of really nice restaurants and cafes in that area too, so it's a nice place to just kind of chill. Uh, the History Museum, that's right by Republic Square, uh, is actually very modern. Uh, I was really surprised because, to be completely honest, Yerevan... So I'm going to take these three countries again and, and then take the capital cities, Yerevan, Tbilisi, and Baku. I have to honestly say Yerevan, to me, is my least favorite. Uh, I don't think it's very beautiful or interesting to be honest I think Tbilisi I probably like Tbilisi the best although I think Baku is very beautiful I think Tbilisi has more culture and it's kind of it's beautiful and Tbilisi is really pretty I really like Tbilisi I really love Baku too but anyway no, this is a Yerevan review so but I will say hands down of these three cities Yerevan has the nicest history museum it's very beautiful it's very modern and new and it's very well thought out and laid out and things are actually translated into English so foreigners can actually read and figure out what they're doing when they're going around. I know a lot of people are always like, if you go to a different country, they don't have to have things in English. I, yes, I understand. But most foreigners, travelers, not just people from English-speaking countries, but most foreigners from all over the world who are traveling to your country are probably going to speak their native language and if they speak a second language, it's probably going to be English. So. A museum should have things in English. It just makes sense. So, yeah, that was really good. And the other thing that I really liked is Saturdays. There is an outdoor market that's also really close to Republic Square, and I don't know the name of it, sorry. I could probably tell you right where it is, though. It is right... Actually, it's in the Vernissage which is like a passage. <laughs> um, and that's where they build it up on Saturdays. And that's a really nice market. It's really good for like local goods. Um, they do a lot of woodworking here, which is really beautiful and relatively cheap. And they do a lot of ca carpeting, but different from like, let's say, or um, Azerbaijan and Iran, where when I went there, they had a lot of carpeting, which was beautiful. But here it's definitely different and very unique and also beautiful in a different way. So I think that's definitely worth checking out. And also relatively cheap. Now, <laughs> yeah, so. Um, food, oh, and I will say the food here is also very good, very tasty, especially the cheeses. So I definitely recommend the food. Good, okay. The things I did not like, um, Republic Square. I wouldn't even go so. I would actually let, let, let me yeah, go to the things I don't like. Let me go to the things I'm just kind of like meh. If you're here, you might as well check it out. But I don't think it's like something to go out of your way to come here for. Um, Republic Square is like a thing that is like the center of Yerevan and everybody goes to, and it's to me it's just kind of like you know. And the opera. Mm. Uh, then there's the very famous monument, it's called um, Mother Armenia. I mean, if you're already here, you might as well check it out. Oh, but you know what is really close to Mother Armenia? Uh, is there's a, like, really old, dilapidated, falling apart amusement park, which, now I already told you guys, like, I'm really into kind of, like, ruins and things that are kind of falling apart already and stuff. With the exception of amusement parks. I don't know what it is, but like you can take an old building and let it be a little dilapidated and it just becomes very romantic and charismatic. But if you take an amusement park and do that, it, it's just creepy. I don't know what it is about amusement parks, but when they're like empty, there's no kids, like it's just really creepy. And like that I think is more interesting than seeing Mother Armenia. Uh, yes. Oh, and then there's the really old church, and I wrote over it so I can't really read and make sure I give you guys the right name. Kaz... Kaz... Kazoke? Kazoke. Uh, 
um, the Genocide Museum. I didn't hate it, but I don't, I don't know. Like, I was expecting a lot more, considering they made a point out of building a Genocide Museum and a monument. And it really is basically just, it's, it, there's like, there's no, there's nothing, there's, they don't show anything. I mean, there's like some pictures and there's like writing, which to me is like, a museum is supposed to kind of have really interesting, like the, the history museum is amazing. They have all these really cool installations to walk through and touch and it becomes very tactile and interactive. And then the genocide museum is just like, there's just some writing on the walls that basically tells you the history of what happened. I kind of was like, like I just looked that up in Wikipedia. So to me, that was kind of mad too. I actually don't think there is anything that I would say I totally hate, hated or disliked or anything. Um, I will say that overall, I don't think Yerevan is a very beautiful city. And I will also say of the three countries in this part of the world, it's by far the most expensive, which really shocked me. I mean, food, I would say, is almost twice as ex nah, maybe not twice, but one and a half times more expensive than it is in Azerbaijan, which is really strange because Azerbaijan is a way richer country than Armenia. So eating at restaurants is really expensive. Um, entries into museums is really expensive like that to me was very off-putting I didn't like especially for a country where I feel like that's very impoverished or, I don't know if it's impoverished but definitely not even as rich as like its neighboring country I was very surprised that, like eating out here is really expensive but then at the same time the, the restaurants are also a lot nicer <laughs> um, yeah Oh my god, so I forgot what we're gonna, something I was going to add to the first part, for those of you guys who are still interested in gay travel information. Um, so one of the things that I've started doing in my videos is, even though I know I get in trouble for this all the time, uh, <laughs> when I really put my own opinion on but I feel like you guys come here before my opinions. I mean, otherwise, go watch some other video, right? So I'm going to tell you guys, to be completely honest, again, of these three countries, uh, this is just my personal opinion. For me, Armenian, Armenia is definitely a country where the women are definitely way better than the men. <laughs> uh, I mean, I've only been in Armenia for four days, but I'm going to be honest, I don't recall seeing a single guy where I was like, whoa, like, like, whoa. Um, <laughs> To be fair, that doesn't happen to me very often in Azerbaijan either. I would say of the three countries, the most attractive men are also in Georgia. Uh, yeah, so this is just my personal opinion. You know, like other people, different people have different things of what they consider as attractive or unattractive. But for me, this is, uh, I, I, the men here were like, mm, mm, I don't know. I think if you're a straight guy and you want an attractive woman, this is a good place to come. A lot of attractive women, but the men here are in. Uh, I also said, decided that what, one of the things I wanted to talk about more like in my gay travel guide videos is that something I find so fascinating is that you go to some countries and there's like a lot of guys who identify as tops or are tops. And then you go to other countries and a lot of the gay men identify as bottoms or are bottoms, however you want to. Like, um, like Azerbaijan is like top. Tops, tops, tops. So if you're a bottom guy and it's very important for you to meet a top and have sex with tops and date a top or whatever, I definitely recommend you go to Azerbaijan. Like in the year that I'm living there, I don't recall really meeting maybe, I, I remember talking to like one guy that I identified as a bottom. Everybody else identified as a top. Like it's just tops, tops, tops. Um, and Armenia, I would say, is a relatively good balance. I would say it's kind of 50 50 here. Uh, so, I, I don't know, like, I'm just kind of throwing that out there because I just found that very interesting. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, okay. This video is already really long. And now, really quickly, <laughs> to my third part, which is just a rant. If you don't like my rants, why I go off and get angry and talk about things that piss me off. Which is not something like about, I don't like it. Yerevan, but just something here. So, the third part goes back to that restaurant that I was at today. And Dol Dolmana, Dolmana, Dolmana. And so I didn't want to put this in the gay part because it doesn't really have anything to do with whether or not the clientele, clientele are gay. But as I was saying in the second part, it's actually, this place, 
Armenia is actually relatively expensive. And this restaurant is very expensive. This is definitely Western world. This is already for Western world, kind of expensive. And of course it was my choice to eat there, but I just really wanted to eat local food and had really great reviews or whatever. So I get in and I open the menu and I'm like, I'm like oh my God, what are these prices? And <laughs> the thing that I finally settled on was like this, uh, it was mushroom, it was like wild mushroom something was the name of it. And let me, okay, um, let me start by saying that I'm definitely somebody I love to eat. I love food, I love to eat. I will throw down good money for some good food. And I have. I'm, I'm, when I was living in Japan, I would gladly throw down like $60 or something for like sushi. Like, it, it, without a blinking of eye, and I wouldn't complain about it, it wouldn't bother me whatsoever. But at the same time, even though I'm a food lover, I'm also not somebody who's into like the shishi food. I want to get full. I definitely want to get full. I, don't, I will eat, I will pay a lot of money, but at the end of the meal, I better be like, damn, I'm full. Like you gave me enough food to satisfy my hunger. So I bought this, like the thing I ordered was like this wild mushroom thing, which basically was like four slices of tomato with some mushrooms on top and then some cheese, melted cheese on it and then some basil, okay? It was like, it was basically an entree. There was like this much food. <laughs> like this and converted to US dollars the dish alone costs about $15 $15 I'm sorry if I'm ordering food for $15 I better get fucking full $15 is not a like I, I just don't understand the shishi food like I know it's kind of like oh it's all about the ambiance and the look of it or whatever but I'm like that I don't can't do I will definitely I, I, trust me, I'm a food lover. I will spend a lot of money, but it has to definitely be quality and quantity combined. I'm not somebody who's just like, oh, but the quality is amazing. But it's kind of like, well, that doesn't help me if I have to eat again in 20 minutes. Like, I don't want to spend $15 on something that's going to make me feel hungry again in 20 minutes and then have to spend $15 again to get full. Like, it doesn't make any sense to me. So I really was kind of annoyed by like the portion size. <clears throat> then on top of that, this restaurant has a service fee, which I would say in most parts of the world, if you go to a fine restaurant, they're going to hit you with a service fee. For those of you guys who don't know that, I think a lot of places, a lot if you eat in normal restaurants, quote unquote, they don't have that. A service fee is basically where they charge you the tip without even giving you the chance to decide if you want to leave a tip or not and you know it's usually in like very small writing at the bottom of the menu and they're like service charge whatever and here the service charge was 10 percent which coming from a european country i know this is going to upset especially the american viewers for those if there's any american viewers here i don't like tipping i admit it i don't like tipping <laughs> i have a huge problem with it uh, just because to me personally I don't think it is my job as the customer to pay the employees wages the employers should do this and I know that like all the American viewers are gonna be like completely like no but the waiters and the waitresses they get so little pay and blah 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 and I know the like Americans are made to feel guilty about everything and they already feel completely guilted into this idea where they basically have to give 20% tip on everything and that can in itself already drives me crazy. I'm sorry. Like I, first of all, I understand waiter and waitresses don't get paid that much. I get it, and so they are compensated by tips. I get it. Still, I don't like the concept. I think that there overall there should be some kind of change. There should be some kind of change where waiter and waitresses get compensated by their employer a correct amount. Like, I just, I just don't understand tipping. I definitely don't understand guilt tipping, and I definitely don't feel like, I'm sorry, but you're not gonna convince me that being a waiter or a waitress is a difficult job. I, it, I'm just not gonna believe that. I mean, you go, you take an order, you walk away, you bring food. I'm sure being on your feet all day is exhausting or whatever, but there's plenty of people with plenty of jobs who are on their feet all day. 
Anyway, this is going into like, I told you guys it's going to be a rant. So anyway, I'm just not a fan of tipping. I already think it's very cheeky in a country where tipping is not even a thing. In America, I'd be like, all right, there's a service charge. America is famous because it's a country where you tip for everything. It's like, oh, thank you for looking at me. Here's a tip, you know. Um, whatever. I feel like it's just very cheeky to me. And <laughs> so anyway, with the tip or whatever, I'm already looking at like a $17 meal, which was good. It wasn't excellent. It wasn't amazing. It was good. Okay. And it was very little. It wasn't enough food to make me full. <laughs> anyway, then the waiter comes and basically the, the, the increments that the money comes in here is 1,000, 5,000, and 10,000. Okay. And 1,000 is approximately $2. Well, I was like, okay, well, you already got yourself a 10% tip. So, and I'm not a big tipper, I already admit it. I, I, I don't like tipping. I, don't, I just don't like tipping. It's just in my blood. I don't like tipping. <laughs> I know that's a super turnoff for a lot of people. Like, yeah, he doesn't like tipping. He's cheap. I don't care. I don't care. <laughs> I mean, you wouldn't be able to date me anyway because I would tell you right now, I don't like tipping. And so I kind of was like, okay. I will tip an additional 500, which is a dollar, and then bring the tip percentage up to maybe like 15% tip, which in my opinion is already way too much. I think 10% is like what a tip should be. Or the way we do it in Germany is a lot of times we just round it up, which I also think is a more appropriate tip. But that's just maybe my cheap European-ness coming through. And the look, <laughs> It was actually funny the look that guy gave me like you're not gonna tip me the full thousand because I couldn't give him a 500 obviously I had to give him a thousand and I was like like he didn't say it but I just was like I want 500 back I'm like I'm sorry but it's kind of like you think you're being all sneaky and cheeky and I didn't read the fact that you already gave yourself a 10% tip and now you expect me to leave you a thousand and almost pump you up to a 20% tip or 25% tip, like, what the fuck? No, like, I just, like, I don't know. For most of you guys, are probably already stopped watching this, this part because you're already like, oh, this guy's just so cheap or whatever, but it just, the only reason I even added this, it's not even, like, a big enough deal to even add to the video. It's only because I added this restaurant to a potential gay travel place and I felt it was my duty to then also give you guys the heads up that it is very expensive and the food is not, there's not a lot of food and I don't think it's good enough to warrant the high cost and I think it's very cheeky that they have a service charge. So that's actually more why I added it. All right, so that's it. Um, at the end of this, of course, I'm only going to show little snapshots that I took throughout Yerevan so you guys can see what it looks like. And if you have any questions or comments telling me that I'm cheap and horrible and I don't know anything, you can, of course, leave those. I'm used to those by now. Yeah, and if you want to add, if there's any kind of input you have, that insider, please do that as well. Okay, bye. Hi, friends and family. I just came from an open-air market, no, a covered market, I'm lying, here in Yerevan, Armenia, and I bought a bunch of snacks, and I thought it would be funny if I tried them out with you guys and gave you guys my review. So I really quickly want to show you guys what I'll be trying. This is a tomato which I'm assuming is candied, because all these other things are candied. A tomato that was filled with nuts and candied, I'm assuming. I don't know. I picked it because it was red, and I was like, ooh, it's probably going to be sweet. But then he was like, oh, tomato. And I'm like, ugh. And I was like, oh, well. This is the same thing, but with figs and nuts on the inside. This is also nuts on the inside, and then... I think they said plum paste. These are candied 
pears, which is the ones I'm most excited about. I saw those and I was like, ooh, I want to try that. This is a candied melon. And this they threw in as a present. And this is also nuts. And we have these in Azerbaijan too. And I think these are just sh flavored sugar probably. Normally, I've seen them in Azerbaijan with caramel, but maybe this is like cherry or strawberry flavored. Mm -hmm. Let's try these out. Probably not quite as interesting or shocking as when you guys saw me eat worms in Zimbabwe, but they don't have anything quite as strange. Okay, let's start with the freebie I got. And these are all supposed to be organic, which is, of course, bullshit. No. The walnuts. <laughs> Walnut. The walnuts are delicious. I love walnuts. And the outside is not very sweet or flavorful. Not overly exciting. Then I'm gonna try this candied melon. This is very candied. That's probably like no. And this smells. It smells familiar, but I can't tell you what it is. Mmm. Oh shit. Mm. Right. <laughs> oh. Mm. Um. What does this taste like? I don't know. Oh, this is good. Mm. 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 This is excellent. Okay. Going back to get more of that tomorrow. Mm, let's try the tomato, because that's actually... Oh. Oh, it smells spicy. This actually smells really good, but spicy. Like, I'm actually... I have no idea what this is going to taste like, because it smells spicy, but it was with all the candied stuff. Okay, it's excellent. Oh, oh, this is excellent. It's, it's just a tiny bit sweet. It's got a little bit of spice to it. Oh, it's like this perfect, oh my God, it's really good. It's like this perfect combination of sweet and spicy. Oh, it's delicious. Oh, okay. this is delicious. Okay. Mm. Okay, so far, very happy. They have two wins so far. Mm. Oh, wow, this is delicious. Okay. Fig. I'm actually not that big of a fig person. I mean, a lot of people love figs, but for me, figs are just like... Mm. Mm. Very good. <laughs> wow, okay. Armenia, you are doing great. Mm. Oh, wow. Very good. Nothing is like too sweet. It's all just the right amount of sweet. Like the nuts kind of set it off with like a little bit of saltiness. Mm. Oh. Mm, mm, mm. Oh my God, Armenia, you are doing very, very well. Loves it. I love walnuts, so maybe that's part of it. Mm. Okay, so it's not bad. I'm definitely not getting the orgasmic feeling that I've got from the last three things I had. The tomato is amazing. 
But as soon as this video is over, I'm gonna like. I'm all crazy on that tomato. But it's good. I mean, it's not like, it's definitely not bad, but just comparatively to the other stuff, it's a little bit underwhelming. Okay. And now, this just looks so cute to me. That's kind of, this is what attracted me to that stand to begin with. I mean, those multiple stands that sold this stuff, but I really like pears. It's just kind of cute. I'm excited and hope this one is good. Oh. Mmm. Okay, this is also excellent. Mm. The outside is like candied. But then the inside you get like this pop of almost like fruit juice. And it kind of gives it that fresh feeling. Oh my god. Oh, excellent. Oh my god. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Armenia. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. Mm. Excellent, excellent. Hoping this is the Genocide Museum because I've been walking for about an hour and a half <laughs> trying to get here. <laughs> 